Let's go, folks. <laughs> Does it felt, sound good? Yeah. I and mean, we could be rolling with it. This is, we were having to uh, pre record this episode. Uh, so we don't know when it's going to come out. So let's go, folks. Might be already over. Uh, <laughs> People might be furious that yeah. you just did that. It might be. That'd be a that copyright. Might, might be an edited out. Yeah, might have had to call and say the people are they're outside my my <laughs> land. They're at the front gate of my land. Yeah. I don't have a gate, but <clears throat> if I did, they would be out there. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Uh, obviously, you can see uh, I we are we're not in the studio. I'm not there. We're down in uh, Florida. So uh, we pre-recorded this, uh, but also want to tell you we like to say. Uh, no big deal, but the truth is the little things can really add up and ignoring emotions only get you so far. Needing help doesn't mean something's wrong with you. It means you're human. Talkspace is here for you. Match with the licensed therapist when you go to Talkspace.com. Get $100 off your first month with the promo code Nate. That's $100 off when you use code Nate at Talkspace.com. Thank you to Viore for sponsoring this episode of Nate Land. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viore.com slash Nate. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but you enjoy shipping on any U.S. orders over $75. Summer is finally here, and boy, are we ready. Amplify your summer with Bespoke Post theme boxes for people who care. From breezy summer styles and grooming goods to travel and outdoor gear, Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life. Get started with the quiz at boxofawesome.com and use code Nate for 20% off your first box. That's code Nate at boxofawesome.com for 20% off your first box. Let's go, folks. Uh, welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. I'm Nate, uh, Aaron, Brian. Uh, I don't know. I started it because I started that weird. You know, we were talking about, and this is in the past, uh, you having more energy with your intermittent fasting. Yeah, and then I... Yeah. And you fell asleep on the couch <laughs> like an old man. Uh, so, I mean, you know, just wondering about that. Yeah. <laughs> I had a long night last night. That's true. And, That's true. And, and then I ate a nice meal for lunch. Yes. And then I put just on baseball. Out. It's the perfect storm, It is dude. the perfect storm. <laughs> it's going to knock me out. A little College World Series. Yeah. A little, you know... Sandwich? Or do you have salad? Had a sandwich. Sandwich. Yeah. College World Series. I mean, that's you know. Try to stay awake. It's a recipe. <laughs> recipe for gout. And <laughs> there's that's a, that's a good nap. I feel good. I'm ready yeah. to go, dude. I'm about to kill. Like this a podcast. nice, yeah. A, a good nap is a nice twenty minute. Mm -hmm. You know, ten minutes. Anything more minutes. than that, I think it throws your body off. 20 minutes is the sweet spot. Just kind of like rest. Yeah. Just rest your body. Just tap out for a minute, regroup. Yeah. Now we're back. I try to do that more on the road now. <clears throat> uh, I try to lay there. I remember I, I don't know, Louis Katz said that once. Uh, very funny comedian. And uh, me and Louis were on the road. And we were going to try to take a nap. And he says he gives himself 20 minutes. If he can't fall asleep, then he gets up and goes. And I remember just thinking that. That was almost like a good like, don't sit there and try to make yourself, you know, it takes 40 minutes for you to get to sleep. That's at night, too, when he goes to bed for the night? No, he's no, no. It's <laughs> just for a nap. Okay, I was going to say. Yeah, he's never slept. <laughs> I give it a go. If it doesn't take, I get up and do things at 3 in the morning. Uh, no, he, he, yeah, for a nap, you give yourself, go in there. Like, sometimes if you lay there and relax and, like, calm everything down you know you, you can fall asleep and take a nap where you're not really asleep and you're you, yeah. you kind of hear everything but then that's usually a pretty good it's a pretty good nap no no man doesn't matter dude <laughs> let's go folks <laughs> I guess, let's I go. Go. Say it more than, doesn't matter dude could be our new tagline <laughs> let's go folks ah. doesn't matter you know <laughs> carlotta simon simonison <laughs> Simonson? Simonson. Wow, the Simonson family. Thought you all died off, but apparently <laughs> some of you are still hanging around. That's why I was so confused by the name. Carlotta. Have we read hers before? You no, know, after you said whatever it was you just said, yeah. and he corrected you, I think we have. Carlotta. She's been on here quite a Do bit Do you have deja vu there for a minute? Yeah. 
when you said Simonson, it hit me like, oh yeah, we've we've been yeah, this before. maybe the same comment. <laughs> uh, one of the many things I love about Nate Lane is how professional the whole thing is and how committed they are to doing it week after week. I know it must be tough with touring to coordinate everyone's schedule to make sure this happens every week. I also love that it's in person only and not over Zoom. It's obvious that Nate gets it. He understands if it's worth if it's worth doing. It's worth doing all the way. Even in a podcast about nothing, it's a clear ton of work goes into it. I, I for one, love it. Well, I love that, Carl. Yeah, it's very nice. That's a very yeah, nice comment. It is that. It is a, there is a lot of work that goes into it. Y'all's mm-hmm. schedule is pretty wide open, but <laughs> they're uh, – how do you type in available? <laughs> There's – yeah, uh, but it is. I'm, I I do appreciate that because I know we talk about nothing and dumb, but we got a lot of cameras, the crew, and there's you know mm-hmm. 25 people in this room during COVID, <laughs> uh, at all times, <laughs> and few of them had it. <laughs> Leslie Hambrick, in my improv class, we learned the first rule of improv is yes and which means that no matter what someone throws out, you go with it. Nate's first rule of podcasting is, that's stupid. We're not talking about that. When Aaron or Beaker throws out an idea he doesn't like. (laughs) I know, it's tough when the whole subject's that. Uh, I love Yes And. I did some improv, uh, and I remember Yes And. And my favorite thing about improv is, maybe my favorite thing in comedy, like something that's bad, is in improv when someone doesn't get it. When someone doesn't get the yes and, it's so fun to watch. When they're like, you know, someone's like sitting here like, oh, hi, welcome to the zoo. And the other guy goes, I've never been to a zoo in my life. And they go, <laughs> <sighs> All right. All right. Just ends it. I mean, there's nothing better, dude. Just to go, you here for your checkup? Uh, I died five years ago. <laughs> Uh, and then they have to run with it. And they have to run with that. <laughs> I mean, that uh, Michael Scott this is one of the greatest. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. he's got all the guns. With the guns. He holds his hands up. <laughs> he whispers in his ear and he holds his hands up. Uh-huh. And he goes, What did he tell you? He said, He can't show you right now, but he does have a gun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Give me all your guns. And he has to hand him all his guns. Wow. He pulls one out at his leg. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's, uh, I mean, he broke every, like, they go, I'm at the lollipop. Come here, God. <laughs> you ever seen the the clip of Liam Neeson and Ricky Gervais? Yeah. Too? Yeah. 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 Where he it's does, unbelievable. He does that exactly. I just talked about this weekend. I mean, it's one of the greatest. It's the best scene of that whole show. Yeah. What show? It was uh, Life's Too Short. Life's oh, Too yeah. Short. Right. You're a hypochondriac at the doctor. Oh, you didn't think I'd know, did yeah. No, we thought someone said it was extras. And then it's, it's the Life's Too Short. Yeah. 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 You're a hypochondriac at the doctor. And he goes, Oh, not you again. I've never been here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Ron Bridgewater. Not sure if I listen to you folks too much, but this might be a sign that I do. I am a pastor, and this past Sunday, when I got up to preach, the first thought that hap- that popped in my head was, Hello, folks. It might have been the Holy Spirit. Not sure. I'm a little late to the Nate Land party, but so glad my son introduced me to it. Thanks for making me laugh on a daily basis. Also, Nate, could you please attempt to say excessolicities? <laughs> <laughs> E-cell is, I don't know that. What is the word? Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. <laughs> yeah. Ecclesiastes. Oh, man. That took a, it's like showing up to the wrong apartment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's like me knocking on the door and then I look across the street and they're like, no, we're over here. And you go, oh, I'm sorry. I was at the, y'all's house looks the same though. <laughs> I'm saying Ecclesiastics and Acesiles would live across the street from each other. And Acesiles Triangle. And Acesiles yeah. Triangle. How do you spell Acesiles? Did you see this tweet that kind of got some traction, Nate? Yeah. Oh, Nate so Bargetti's transformation from youth pastor to pastor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's so great. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. You really have changed. Uh yeah, you know, start growing a beard that helps. Uh everything else just falls into place after that. Everything else falls into place. Well, you just get older, if everything yeah. starts, you start you're becoming less of an animal. You just start, you know, it just all kind of goes away. And then you're just like, all right, I need to 
try to focus on the career a little bit. Mm-hmm. That would help out. Uh, <clears throat> maybe he's going to say, let's go, folks. Let's go, folks. Hello, folks. I like hello, folks, still. I'm fine with either one. I, I mean, we're, we're, who knows when this episode comes out? We might have already made the decision. I, I kind of hope it's a let's go, folks. You're already backtracking a little bit, I feel like. No, but I do think it's – I like it being uh, – that's a very original. Like, that's – no one says that. I do like that. Mm-hmm. I think that's important. But probably shouldn't be talking about it because it's already <laughs> happened. Uh, Madison Hill. So I had to MC an event for work last night. When I wrapped up my five-minute intro, I sat down at my table, and a woman leaned over me and said, "Good, great job. You reminded me of my favorite comedian, Nate Bargetsy. Y'all have the exact same cadence. I just wanted to come clean here and let Nate know I must have stolen his cadence and tone unintentionally from listening to the podcast so much. I'm so I'm sorry. I will try to talk like him less. Well, Madison, I appreciate that. Uh, that'll be your last gig you ever get. <laughs> you ever come in here? <laughs> you, Madison, you can have my cadence. Uh, just uh, with like uh, three dollars a day. <laughs> I'll take three dollars the whole day. You use it. Mm-hmm. It's like one of those infomercials for three dollars a day. Three dollars a day, you can have my cadence. <laughs> you can sponsor Nate Margetsy <laughs> and t- take my cadence. <laughs> take it out with me. Esolicities. You don't even know how to say stuff like that. Uh. <laughs> Spencer Day, as a speech language pathologist working at a specialized stuttering facility. <laughs> facility just jam them all in a box is that what (laughs) much of stutters they just throw in a facility like a barn they go back 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 back, where they just shove them in a barn and they don't open that that's what that sounds like don't open open that that door door. what is it you just hear it'll come out all right i have to say i really appreciated this episode i generally Feel like my best work is done on Wednesdays as if I'm already primed by listening to this chaotic mess of a podcast <laughs> before helping others with speech, language, and communication difficulties. Thanks for the laughs and small highlights to our field. PSM, PSM. <laughs> PSI, I'm currently t- taking new clients of either Nate or Barracuda for the nose whistling are interested. Love the podcast. Keep up the great work. Uh, doesn't yeah. need me. Doesn't know. I don't need any work. I don't know if you yeah. do. Yeah. I don't know how big that facility is, maybe. <laughs> if one of us goes down, I'm bringing us all down. <laughs> Uh, you know, someone did say that they, someone told me they think I have dyslex- dyslexia. Well, we read that on a live podcast at Zany's. Oh, yeah. Someone said it again. <laughs> I, 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 do you get checked for it? Yeah, you I, Oh, I did it online. I looked up an online thing. Did you take the test online? I didn't look up a, this one's like just a, the rough like questions to I think see if you should even be talked to. Uh-huh. I was an answer to every yes to every one of them. Uh-huh. Like it was. Uh, oh. Give me a second. And then. Uh, have that's, you, not, that's not what I want. I do. How do have you asked? <laughs> oh, wait, how wait, do, yeah, yeah. Hold on. What let, was that? We'll get back to that. This is the. Uh, have you? How uh, do I know? This is from the, my child child is behind. Behind. This is from the parents' perspective. Oh. Let me find. Let me find. Send yeah. that to his parents. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Andy Asber, Nate. I'm a huge fan of your comedy, and, and and I'm an aspiring comedian myself. I'm trying to learn the ropes, and I've listened to every podcast interview of yours I can find. I hear you often talk about the importance of the hang when it comes to being around other comics. I've noticed that you. Have no problem making fun of gout foot and broomstick, but you don't seem to like it when they return it to you. Is the rule of the hang that a comic can't make fun of another comic unless they are equal or above them in their career? I think I get made fun of. You get made fun dude. We're about I'm about to quiz you on whether you have dyslexia. Yeah. I feel like I know they little- <laughs> I think so this happens a bunch, and maybe I'm wrong, but people tend to think that I don't get made fun of. I'm getting I said I get you said it. The made fun of you being old. I'm getting told that I don't know how to read, and people just overlook it. I think maybe it's because when I make fun of y'all, it is better than when you make fun of me. 
And so then it feels like it's heavy handed. Uh-huh. But that's that's not my fault. Y'all are not as good. That's a big part of it. So what do you want? What that's, is Andy? What do I need to do when I'm hanging around lesser than? He's telling us to step it up. I think. I think that's the message. Uh-huh. You can you can make fun of a comic. You done that's New York is like. Look, I do think you learn to. You got to learn when to do it. If you're a younger comic, you don't want to come in and just be like you're trying. Mm-hmm. And like it's getting too much, so it's like have fun and make fun of each other. You're gonna go harder on the people you're closer to, yeah. And then if you are around someone that's older, I do think there's a little, you know, you just don't do it as much because they're older than you and reverence. Yeah, and you're just kind of like I don't know. It's yeah, you look at them as like a senior, something you know, or something like that. Uh-huh. And so you wouldn't go as crazy. The most so that and there is a little truth in that. The most you're gonna get is people around the same age starting. Not even age, but comic comedy age. Yeah. Those people are going to comics are going to go the hardest after each other. And then I think there is a difference in the fact of like just in your careers you're going to like when I was with uh I mean when I, with all the comics that are older than me. If I'm around Burr, if I'm around Burr like I don't make fun of Burr a ton. Like uh-huh. I could joke around them and make fun of them. I could, but I don't. Like yeah. it's it's uncomfortable. Like it's, yeah. but it's Burr, and you're like, I'm just not going to do that as much. But he could trash me, oh, and Burr right. wouldn't be. Burr's not saying he's, he would try to stop me from trashing him, but he would, you know. That's just the dynamic between. Yeah. Do you want to take this self assessment? Yeah, let's see what it is. Number I mean, one, this is for you, Andy. That thinks. Uh, number one, do you read slowly? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's crazy. Did you have trouble learning how to read when you were in school? I mean, I guess it doesn't look like I learned. Uh, do you? Often have to read something two or three times before it makes sense. I mean, who wrote this? Is it uh, folk? Did a folk write this? Are you uncomfortable reading out loud? I mean, I it's nope. embarrassing. I am unco- like I don't. I wouldn't in this setting. Yeah, I'm yeah. fine, but yeah. I'm not gonna do it in. Uh, do you ever read out loud like a church or stuff stuff like no. that? Like, yeah, no, I would never do that. Do you omit, transpose, or add letters when reading or writing? <laughs> I think I see a different sentence than y'all see. <laughs> Do you find you still have spelling mistakes in your writing even after using spell check? I sometimes spell check can't even, I'm not even on the same page where they go, I don't even know what you're trying to do. Do you find it difficult to pronounce uncommon multi- multi-syllable words when you are reading? I mean, I'll answer yeah, that one. Yeah. Do you choose to read magazines or short articles rather than books and novels? Longer books. I don't even. I think a magazine's pretty long. <laughs> I don't know what kind of magazine they. <laughs> yeah, like what's shorter than a magazine? And who's reading? Sh- uh, yeah, our short articles. Yeah, a whole magazine. Mm-hmm. No, I don't. Do I breeze through a short article? Yeah. <laughs> do I get a g- glimpse of it? When you were in school, did you find it extremely difficult to learn a foreign language? <laughs> I remember we took Spanish, and it was very brief. And I don't know how I can say "ola" and "agua" and stuff, but. I don't. I, I didn't do much with it, so I didn't take more. <laughs> I mean, I could say hello and water. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else you want. What are yeah. you? What else are you going to say if you're in trouble? I go down there. Hola, yeah. agua. Yeah. Those are mainly the two things I need. Ooh. Do you avoid work projects or courses that require extensive reading? Yeah. For, I mean, I started stand-up comedy where I don't have to read. <laughs> I did it so much so that I got out of the. I think there's yes on the. What is that? I mean, what are the other yeses you haven't said? Did you have trouble learning how to read when you were in school? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> All right. I was being uh, nice on some of these. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's for my health, yeah. so you don't have to be nice. <laughs> so it is, 100%. do I have it? Well, the self-assessment, I am 10 for 10 on yeses. <laughs> so let's get, we'll get a doctor in and maybe check it out. Yeah, let's, we'll get one on the pod. On the, right what then. are you supposed to do? You have dyslexia. Get to Archon. What does you, that mean? You can. Uh, I thought it meant you read stuff back. It's like you just look at stuff wrong. God, that is some of it. So yeah, yeah. You know, know Doctor Safdar Khan. Spencer Safdar Khan. will be in this Spencer Day. Yeah, Spencer Day. We're being that. We got a guy right here. Facility. Oh, that's right. I'll be in there. Get him. Yeah. Just here in the other room here. It's a bunch of nose whistlers. Just in the right there. You go, what's, is there like birds in here? You go, nah, I got nose whistling class at 12. And just 
<laughs> You're like, no, yeah. no, do it again. No, everybody. Back oh, away, no. back away. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and he's got everybody grabs to breathe right before they sit down. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Well. All right. Man. You know, Rudy had dyslexia. Did he? He did. That's cool. And they made a movie about him. Hmm. Uh, what do you do? I don't it's not know. Fun. I bet it's not fun. It's not even worth looking into. I wouldn't. <sighs> I haven't even checked to see if I have gout. It's been a year. Yeah, but isn't gout? Which one's more embarrassing? Gout goes away. Gout's pretty embarrassing. The gout goes away. I'm 29 years old with gout. That's pretty embarrassing. Yeah, but then you've lost like 50 pounds or something. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you've, you really answered it. So you've gotten better. Yeah. Does it, what are they, dyslexia? They just take you out in the barn and shoot you like a horse? Like, I don't know. I think at about eight, like, if he teaches you, or anyone teaches you about your weight. Yeah. You could lose 100 pounds in a year yeah. and show them or yeah. anything. Almost anything you could prove people wrong. Yeah. But for someone makes fun of your age, yeah. it's like, I'm going to prove them. A year later, you're just going to be a year older. There's nothing That's you can true. do. Yeah. It's just going to get worse. I want to work really hard. And then a year from now, <laughs> I'll show I'll you. be older than I am now. You had to make it all about you, didn't you? <laughs> I'm learning to have dyslexia. <laughs> and we can't make fun of your age. But we can, we can fix it's that. It's a very old thing. How can you fix dyslexia? That's what he's asking. I don't know. Oh. Well, I think the speech pathologist. Oh could yeah, do it. uh, it'll change my whole game up. Uh, Jay Workman, it's <laughs> a good name. Since Nate hates, let's go. I would like to get his take on the fan who yells "Get in the hole" on every putt during golf tournaments. They do it on tee shots too. Uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. Here's my thing with sayings. That I, that I truly believe. If you hear it so much, don't be the one that says it. Mm-hmm. Come up with a different thing. That's all, that's all that you got to do. That's almost like you see homeless guys have funny signs. Well, there's a, for a while, you're like, I've already seen that sign, I dude. Like, and know. so it's like, but when the guy has this super original sign, then you kind of go, all right, I've never seen that one. Uh-huh. And that's the same way. They get in the whole mashed potato, you know, Baba Booey, they Mm-hmm. I yeah I, I kind of understand Bob Bowie because it's Howard Stern. They're trying to you know Howard Stern usually like shows that plays that, but uh, it's uh, yeah I don't I don't I'd come up with an original one. That's all I would say. I, to me, the guy that yells "Get in the hole" is the guy that yells "Free Bird" at a band. Yeah, yeah. Where they think it's so original and clever and yeah. funny, but everyone else is like, "God, I've heard that a million times, a million times," and it's very annoying. Yeah. They haven't heard "Let's Go, folks," <laughs> or maybe, yeah, "Hello, folks." Hello, folks. On a could be good on a golf tournament <laughs> right after a ball hit. Hello, folks. That would be very. We're like, well, we definitely know what that. Meant. Like, <laughs> yeah. no, you don't say that in that scenario. <laughs> Colt Keller, hey Nate and crew, love the episodes and just the random things y'all banter about. The more I've listened, the more I've con- I'm convinced that Nate and I would probably be great friends. McDonald's golf and random rants to get serious about nothing. Keep it up, guys. P.S. Gout isn't a joke. I'm 28 and dealt with it since I was 19. It's definitely something you don't want. Mm. Mm. Took a turn. 19. Oh, did take a turn. Thanks, Colt. Yeah. He's looking out for you, man. You know? You want to take a less uh, test on if you got gout or not? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Do you have trouble reading? <laughs> uh, no. Mm-hmm. You wear Walmart slippers. I do wear Walmart yeah. slippers quite a bit. You have two different sized socks. The ideal way to diagnose gout is to draw fluid out of the joint and have the fluid examined. Well, I can't do that on the podcast. Sure we can. Uh, Dr. We'll Safdar Khan. There, yeah. Well, yeah, we got real doctors, dude. They come in here and do it. Under get Safdar Khan you know, on. He gets under the table like Holly. <laughs> down there doing the show by the end of it. <laughs> you just see him. He something. cuts it, your ankle open and he takes it on the <laughs> finger. <laughs> And goes, tastes like mayonnaise, <laughs> gout. <laughs> is that? This is mayonnaise in my joints. <laughs> yeah. And go, yeah, a little spicy. Uh, Marion Scott Lusk, Lusk, like the Lusk mattress. I challenge Nate to not touch his microphone for 60 seconds or be nice to breakfast for 60 seconds. Your choice. 
Uh, I do touch, well, I, but I, I think a lot of people do. I won't touch the microphone for 60 seconds. <laughs> uh, easiest question ever been asked. <laughs> That's like uh, when Michael Scott was tr- trying to pretend like he liked Toby. Like, yeah. He's yeah. A good guy. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. I can't do it. I can't. Do I'm, it. He's the worst. He's the worst. <laughs> ben Simpson. Nate, when you were on podcasts like Tom Segura at your mom's house, which is a completely different style of humor than yours, you seem to have a pretty good skill of turning uncomfortable questions or topics back to your own style of humor, deflecting the topic to something else. Just wondering if that was something you developed over time. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it would have been. I mean, just over the years of, I'm not going to go there. Uh, so you just make a joke on whatever they're going to talk about. People are pretty good. Sugar and them are pretty good with, uh, you know, uh, me and him talk a little bit. We're like, we're friends. Like, I think we both are very interested. Uh, we, you know, like, I don't know where we're at in our careers and both as comics, like, so I, I really liked our conversation on there because we talked a lot about comedy and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but yeah, yeah, you do get you did get good at it. I mean, I you know I don't think it's like you intentionally. Yeah, but I guess you are. You do work at it. You get you get good at it. It's like I always think something like it's like I specifically work on this thing, but it's like yeah. I mean, I had to do it every comedy show I ever did in New York going up. I mean, I was following everybody's dirty closer with a clean opener Mm -hmm. because I would be next. And Mm -hmm. so it would just be like, you have to figure out how to like, how do I get these people into switching gears? Mm -hmm. So you do that. But I mean, they were good. You know, Tom and them are so good. Tom and Christine are so great. So Sean Moose, the Michael Scott quote perfectly describes what it's like to listen to Nate read. Sometimes I'll start a sentence and I don't even know where it's going. I just hope I find it along the way. Like an improv conversation, an improvisation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is funny. that. Glenn Whelan. Hello, folks. I created the Nate Land theme park in a video game called Planet Coaster. I just wanted to show you guys how much you are all appreciated and congratulate you on the first anniversary. Wow. Do you want to see the Nate yeah, Land theme park? That's crazy. Recreated. What is this on? A game called Planet Coaster. Can you play the game? You you it's like Sim City, I'm guessing, where yeah. you just build it. But there's a mode where you can so it says, Hello, take folks. the perspective of yeah. somebody going to the park and we're kind of walking around it. Is you see me? Zanies is yeah. there in the background. There's a planet fitness. Isn't this crazy? That's crazy, dude. Even in the Zanies, uh there's a truck that's crashed into the wall. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> There's a fire. There's a fire. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, this is awesome. Look at that. We're on the marquee outside Zanies. Yeah. There's um, a, a Serpentarium ride where you go, like you dodge alligators or crocodiles. And it's busy. Yeah. No mask. <laughs> Here in Nate Land, we're... we're on a roller coaster now going around. I mean, the amount of detail and thought that went into this is... Pretty amazing. Yeah. So this this video is uh, is this on YouTube? Uh huh. Olivia's mini golf oh, right here. Wow. Yeah. So will people be able to play this? Or? So you could you could in theory you'd play his his map. Yeah. So there's the Serpentarium right over there. Wow. Let's see if I can find where. I think it's around the eleven minute mark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's so. And now cool, we're man. inside the Serpentarium. Yeah, um, alligator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's that's pretty crazy, dude. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So this is really cool. Thank you. Who who is it that sent this in? What's this? Uh, Glenn Whelan. Yeah. Yeah, Glenn Whelan. Really, really cool, man. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That is awesome. Yeah. Uh, nine views. <laughs> uh, Glenn. Oh, it's on. Oh, it's, it's unlisted. unlisted. It's not. Yeah. It's not public. <laughs> Will he make it public ever? You know, I'm, I'd love to share it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll find out. Yeah, we'll yeah. email yeah. back and ask him to make it public. Yeah, see, we're we're posted out. Let people see it. I mean, that's so cool, dude. Like that's uh, you know, it shows you you can make a theme park out of nothing. It's, it's a, yeah. like it's all, but you can make it. It's pretty. You know, would people go to this theme park? I want a theme park now. I never not wanted one. 
and it would be uh, the entrance would be the word E would be spelled backwards. A little nod to the dyslexia because that, <laughs> that I died from, <laughs> and I didn't survive. He died of dyslexia. They took him out back and shot him. When yeah, he found out he out he yeah, good. He can't read. <laughs> We all talk to our friends when we are going through things, but they don't always give the advice we need because they just don't know how. And maybe they don't have good advice. Maybe their life's a wreck. Getting neutral feedback and advice from a licensed professional can be way more helpful. When you're in a low point, you might feel alone, but over 50% of Americans struggle with their mental health. I meant so many people. We all need help sometimes, and asking for support when you need it is actually a sign of strength. You're getting better. I think if you're looking for someone to talk to, you're going to talk. You're going to love Talkspace. They make it so easy to match with a licensed therapist and schedule live video sessions, all from the comfort of your device. You can start mes messaging your therapist the same day you sign up. Talkspace works around your schedule at your convenience. Sends and receives unlimited messages with your dedicated therapist in the app. Schedule live video sessions with a licensed therapist anywhere from anywhere. Start feeling better with a single message match with a licensed therapist when you go to Talkspace.com. Get $100 off your first month with the promo code NATE. That's $100 off when you use code NATE at Talkspace.com. Viore is a new outlook on performance apparel. Perfect if you're sick and tired of traditional old workout gear. Everything is, is designed to work out in, but does not look or feel like just workout clothes, which I love. It is so comfortable. You wanna wear it. You're going to wear it all the time. They make it look so great in everyday life, not only in the gym. So many people are still working from home. So with Viore, you can look nice, feel great, and run errands. I have this sun Sunday performance joggers, and I mean, they're super comfortable, and they look great. You can wear them out around town. Everybody's wearing like workout stuff now, so this is a good mix of being able to wear that stuff out and still look good. Ordering online is very easy. The website is not cluttered. It's very easy to get by. Very easy to pick styles, color options, and everything has a great fit to it. Do yourself a favor and get your own Viore. Viore is an investment in your happiness. For our listeners, they're offering 20% off your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viore.com slash Nate. That's V-U-O-R-I dot com slash Nate. You will receive 20% off your first purchase, but also get free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. Go to viore.com slash Nate and discover Viore clothing like I did, I love it, and I know that you will too. This summer, Bespoke Post is here to take your adventures to the next level with a new lineup of must-have box of awesome collections. Bespoke Post works with small businesses and new brands to bring you the most unique goods every month. We selected the coffee theme box of awesome, so getting to try different coffees was perfect. I really like iced coffee, as you know, so it's fun to get to try it. You get to see what they bring you. The weekend bag would be great for traveling this summer. Maybe you have a road trip planned. No matter what you're into, Box of Awesome has you covered. From travel and outdoor gear to breezy summer styles and grooming goods, Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life. The outdoor and travel boxes look great. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. They release New boxes every month across a bunch of di different categories. It's free to sign up. You can skip a month or cancel any time. Each box costs only 45 bucks, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter, enter the code NATE at checkout. That's box of, boxofawesome.com. Code NATE for 20% off your first box. Uh, all right, this week... Uh uh since we this is going to be coming out in a few weeks uh so i don't know when but we are going to talk about discoveries discoveries mm. like i just discovered i have dyslexia yep <laughs> almost anything can be a discovery i guess if you if you find a 20 dollar bill in your pocket you didn't know you had is that a discovery yeah it's the, I think so. it's the i think that's a found it's a found oh, so oh, like you found it well, those words are pretty similar. I know, but they're not discovery. I would, you know, that's, you know, We're if you're, of if you're Columbus and, and mm -hmm. you, the guy next to him goes, well, I discovered a $20 bill in my <laughs> pocket last night. And you're like, all right, we're taking a little steam away little, from little Liberty there. Earth. I word. discovered America or whatever he discovered. The America, right? People, he was know, in the Americas. The yeah. Americas. Yeah. 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 Well, we've talked about some, we talked about some of the explorers, 
in the Renaissance episode, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of the guys who discovered planets and stuff like that. Um, these are more like surprise discoveries. Like first, like in medicine, penicillin. Mm-hmm. Penicillin changed the world. It's that's antibiotics, and this guy was not trying like to. I'm s- a stupid. I mean, just talk. It's like people get sick and they take medicine. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is a paper. People write on it. Okay. I don't want to assume anything on here. Uh, Maybe assume some so you don't point out too much. <laughs> the go. I, I, do I get made fun of? I mean, no, I don't. I get uh, just told I'm. I don't even know what. All right. Uh, Sir Alexander Fleming was trying to do an experiment on the flu virus. He took a two week vacation <laughs> and left his workout and came back and found mold had started growing on it. But he noticed that destroyed the virus, and that's what led to penicillin, mm. which changed the world. Yeah. Did he does he make money off of it? I don't know. I I if it's like pa- is the penicillin patented. family do they get are they good? Are they set? Like his family should be set forever, right? The penicillin family. The penicillin, the penicillin family. boys. Yeah. There's one guy, yeah. right? That found it. Uh well, the Sir Alexander Fleming was the guy who found it, yeah. Yeah. So the Fleming family should be if you're a Fleming, like we got I would hope so, dude. Yeah. They've saved millions of lives. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope they're set. Yeah, that's what I mean. I'm I'll, just saying I hope that's the case. I hope yeah, so. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It was in uh the nineteen twenties. So and that can that name in the twenties? <laughs> what Sir uh, Alexander? Where was he at? Uh he's Scotland. Scottish. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, are they doing well, good as a family? Got on a stamp. Alexander. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you've learned he. No one respects anything. Queens on money. Who, who, who is it? Who isn't on money? We got a theme park. Doesn't matter. You know, everybody can get everything. Uh, and this guy's got on a stamp. Yeah. It's like I wonder if they make. You know, it's like is that like, but it's pharmacy money. Even you know. <laughs> Big Pharma. Big Pharma. <laughs> you know, a lot of these guys... You know, why make, didn't he sell this to uh, Pfizer? Well, a lot of these guys that make discoveries in medicine, they elect not to sell the patent just so that everyone can get things cheaply, and they just choose not to make any money. Hmm. It's yeah. possible this guy which is that. Which is the best. Yeah. Which is the way When you hear be. people did that, where they're like, yeah, I'll just make it available to everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the greatest thing. It's the mm-hmm. It's the point of it. Yeah. Versus, yeah. Making money but it can it. also be the incentive for people to do research and find stuff out if you know that you're going to be able to make money from it. So it's like it's yeah. a it's a it's a balance. But that but if you have something like that, if it's it's you know, look, if it's to cure gout, I, I don't <laughs> spill the beans. I get it. You know. <laughs> but if it's the main thing, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. That's fair. And change that's what they were argued about the COVID thing. Right. It was like they were all like uh, they none of or none of them were given the how to make it, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Well, just tell us." And they're like, "No, we don't." You're like, "Well, it's affected the whole world, so yeah. maybe we should know." Right? Maybe don't try to make. We just let us know this time. Yeah. You know? Like so, it's like you can look at stuff. There's plenty of money to be made off vaccines or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, let's uh, let's make the other one a little more available. Yeah. Speaking of Pfizer. Uh, they patent Viagra. <laughs> they were doing treatments for heart conditions on men, and they noticed it had some different side effects, and that's what led to that. And then they got Pele, who was probably the, one of the most famous people in the world, to uh, do a campaign ad for it, and that's what led to Viagra. Yeah. The soccer player? Yeah. <sighs> he did a commercial Pele. for it. To, that's crazy. Yeah. They don't even do. Do they do commercials for? I guess they still. Oh do. yeah, oh yeah, oh, all, yeah. The time. all the time. Yeah, yeah. Cialis, Viagra. Yeah, I remember seeing like Rafael Palmero, and I think Tino Martinez and all these baseball players start to do mm-hmm. Viagra commercials early yeah. on before the steroid stuff came out. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> I think right around. There. Yeah, that's when they had to do it. <laughs> yeah, and they go, "Do you still do it now?" He goes, "Surprisingly, no." Huh. 
Huh. Who would have who would have thought? <laughs> who would have thunk it? That guy's Rafael Perel was the one that famously wagged his finger at yeah. Congress. I remember watching that uh-huh. live. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like uh-huh. I did not I take did not take <laughs> steroids. And then I remember yeah, I remember watching that live. You know who I never thought did anything was uh what's the guy for the uh Barry Brewers? Yeah. Uh, uh, oh. G- Gary Sheffield? No, Tony uh, Gwynn. Tony Gwynn. Uh, yeah, the, the outfielder. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't Christian Ryan, Yelich, was it? Ryan, oh, Ryan Braun? Ryan Braun. Yeah. yeah. Like when he came out and said, I didn't do it, and he was like, they did something. Yeah. I think I remember thinking like, yeah, this guy didn't do it. Yeah. And he didn't look, he's not like enormous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so you didn't think that. And then, I mean, and it just came out and you were like, oh, this guy. I mean, they just crushed him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Immediately just said no. I was looking the other day at, at a, if you look at Barry Bonds, the the, the size of his head, because mm-hmm. that was introduced in those in those uh, testimonies. Yeah. Was how his hat size changed throughout the year. I mean, look at this picture. Look at what he started. I mean, just <laughs> yeah. his head is so different. Yeah. yeah. I think he went up like a half a hat size throughout, you know, and that just doesn't happen to people. Your head just doesn't get half a hat size bigger as you get older. You know, it's just shaped completely different. Yeah. It's wild. That one's not real. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like he's a, he's a real bobblehead. <laughs> that must be bobblehead night. No, that's Barry Bonds. Oh. Do you think he got a raw deal of like, you know, I always think like, I, I like when someone says like they should be, uh, just put them in a different section or something like that. Mm, yeah. Like it's like you don't take them out of the, you know, the Hall of Fame. You didn't pretend that these guys didn't dominate the sport for decades. Yeah, it's a, yeah. but I get it, it's tough. Like the guys that that did uh, played fairly, mm-hmm. so I understand. I understand that like the the toughness of like having to deal with that decision. But like P Rose, like P Rose, it's like just put him in, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, but it is kind of crazy when you talk about P Rose did gamble. And it's just been so far removed that they're like letting him go. But it is funny that you go, all right, dude. You, every, every time you go back and go, let's just let him in. Let's relook at the case. What did he do? He bet on the games he played in. <laughs> and they go, ah, you know what I mean? Like that's, and it's still like, dude, I just bet on my team. You're like, well, how do we ever know that? Yeah. Is it I, right? I, I've never heard that perspective before. That's interesting. What? How do you? Uh, people, I mean, almost everyone I talk to about this, they're like, ah, who cares? Just let him in. He's the best ever. Yeah. You know, but I've never really thought about what he was accused of doing and what he did. Well, if you go look at it, I I, I, I would say let him in. Uh, but I would think every time you go, because you get removed from it. Mm-hmm. And I think every time you go, all right, let me look at what his case was again. <laughs> he bet on the games he played in. Yeah. And we, and then, the, and then someone's like, well, he only bet on his team. You're like, so who said that? Him? Yeah, him. Him. He told us uh-huh. that he only bet on the his the games he played in. That's a lot of trust. Now I, I'm for I, I you know I have nothing against P Rose. I think he should be in it. But it, but I do understand the. I bet every time you go look at it, you would be like, we yeah. just can't. Dude. Like, yeah. he's bet on these games. It's the main thing. Mm-hmm. Shoeless Joe Jackson. That was the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, and you got them out. Right? They made a movie about him. Mm-hmm. Didn't yeah. they? Yep. Yeah. Eight men out. Eight men out. Eight men out. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> a lot of thinking on this podcast. <laughs> Pondering. These are... Uh, give me a lot to think about, man. Some surprise discoveries. The microwave. The guy was trying to make an energy source radar, but he noticed his chocolate bar in his pocket had melted. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and so he's like, let me try it with popcorn. He put popcorn in it and it started popping. That's how the microwave was invented. There's uh-huh. a lot of, I think if you're married to an inventor, it's a lot of like golf. you like, I think I got it. Like, I think it's a lot of switching, you know? It's like, I'm doing a radar thing. You're like, oh, it's great, man. That's cool. And, you're, and then like a week later, what are you doing? He's like, yeah, the radar thing. I'm like, I'm going to do a thing that heats up food. And you go, okay. Like, it's like, you know, yeah, yeah. you go from respecting the guy to then go not respecting him mm-hmm. to then that guy is the most respected. Yeah. But when he first, you know, he had to go talk to a neighbor and that he just said, 
you know, I was talking about the radar thing. I'm not, it's kind of off that now. And like these guys that invent stuff, you are always just kind of throwing stuff out mm -hmm. and you just tolerate it. Right. You know, at first you're like, oh, that's cool, man. And then there's probably years of just garbage. Yeah, mm -hmm. nothing working. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're like, all right, yeah, okay, dude. And then he tells you, we've worked this radar thing forever. And then he's like, I'm going to heat up food quick mm -hmm. in a microwave. And you're like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't. And you just hope that's not the time you do it. Because then that becomes huge. Yeah. And then you're like, you got to then be. You should have believed in him one more time. One more time. And you're sitting here at a Sears yeah. buying his thing. I hope <laughs> the microwave family's doing well, too. Is it, It's this guy. I mean, yeah. like, is this guy. Look, look, look up his net worth. Percy Spencer. Percy Spencer's net worth. I mean, the microwave, can you, is it something that uh, you can, is one of the richest inventors? Yeah. At $1.5 million. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's doing great. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. So he was very, very young when he discovered this, but. Really. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's. Jeez. uh yeah, it's supposed so to he was a millionaire at the time. When did he, the microwave get invented? Uh, was when World War II was ending, so the forties. Okay. So one point five million. If that's what they're saying, then that was a ton of money. Yeah. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah, he deserves it. God knows, I use his product a lot. I used it uh, last yesterday. Used it every day. Yeah, it's pretty. It's a pretty. Uh, it's a big one. I just, I don't know how it works. It, it's hot as an oven, but you can open it up immediately. Put your yeah, and touch it. the side of it. And it doesn't. doesn't someone have a joke about that? I don't know. Yeah. All right. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> some energy. Y'all better get some. I do. <laughs> All right. Let's step it up. Look it up. Here we go. Uh, we jokes about microwaves. Anesthesia during the early 1800s. Listen to this episode. That's what they're going to do. <laughs> Get your wisdom teeth out. They're going to just play this episode. What is a microwave? <laughs> the person's beep? going to be so asleep they don't feel <laughs> being stabbed in the mouth. That's how. That's how the silence of the boringness of this <laughs> podcast has gotten. What's the difference between a microwaved sweet potato and a thrown pig? What? One is a heated yam. The other is a yeeted ham. <laughs> Dude, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> is that the joke you were thinking about <laughs> all right what was gonna, so, this is it would be funny if we were coming off some steam <laughs> i feel like we were for a minute <laughs> we gotta pick it back up though i hear you anesthesia during the early 1800s they were having nitrous oxide parties they called them laughing parties people were just doing it and then they finally realized you know what we could use this to help mass pain and anesthesia was born. Started using it for surgeries. It's like uh, cocaine. Eventually, will be that. <laughs> it's almost, that's that's <laughs> what I'm seeing. I don't. That it was a party. Yeah, like yeah, it was just like a, just a house party. Yeah, it was just a club. Drug. And now it's like you imagine the every time the per people that go like to the dentist after that, and they're like right on the cusp of going to parties, uh -huh. doing that, and then they're with their kid, and they're doing that, and they're going. I can't believe that we're doing that here. Uh, like they're, you know, it's got to be weird. It's like yeah. doing. And yeah, it's like going to the 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 dentist and they yeah they make you snort a line of cocaine. Yeah, and you're like, I thought this part of my start, life was over. Yeah, you start cleaning up. You start like, <laughs> and they're like, what's he doing? You, you start filling stuff out, and you filling forms out. You may fill that form out for you. Uh, and you wow, they fill your own forms out for you here. And he goes, "What's your name? I'll write it all down." <laughs> And you're this is an inappropriate dentist. It's like uh, what's his face? His dentist. Oh, Tim Watley. Yeah, Tim Watley. Yeah. Uh, let's get into some animals that were recently discovered, like in the last hundred or so let's years. Get into them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is like the, 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 like someone's like, I hope this thing was over. And they go, All right, we'll come back to that. Uh, but you ever see a guy giving like a speech at something uh, and you're like, you hope they're coming to an end and then they flip, they have another page uh, and you're like, Oh, or we'll, co yeah. we'll come back to that later. We'll yeah. come back to that is I think for speakers and for comedy or anything, I think it's one of the worst sayings you could ever, we'll come have. back to that later. I'll get, but I'll get back to that. 
because people don't want to know that we're not like are you going to come back to it yeah i want to be done yeah how yeah. many chapters are how there? Many, i'll just do the do, do the chapters if i read you know if you're going to do it just do it but if you you know you start something like oh we went to the beach one day but we'll get to that later on mm -hmm. how much later on are we going to get like i don't uh -huh. Uh -huh. It, like it's i don't think it's a good uh thing to say mm -hmm. i don't think people look forward to it no. like they don't go well, i can't wait till oh, we get like back lean to forward oh yeah yeah okay of cool. this you know you're competing against a movie of uh, Transformers on a movie screen. <laughs> Let me get back. We're going to get back to that. Mm. I'm going to be watching <laughs> Beetlejuice right now. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah. uh, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs was only not that long ago discovered. They was discovered in 1800s. They found the first fossils of dinosaurs. Yeah. And then they... That's when they gave it the name dinosaur. Um, you think all the founding fathers, those guys are all around before they knew about dinosaurs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that change the way you think about them? The founding fathers. Yeah. Are the dinosaurs. <laughs> the founding fathers. That they didn't like, Well, they were figuring out everything out above yeah. ground. So they weren't looking. That's fair. They had other stuff going on. They had a, yeah. They did a pretty good job. And then they you wanted them to start digging too it wasn't enough you know that well it's just it's crazy that yeah. there's this huge yeah. thing that they just had no idea nobody had a basement <laughs> <laughs> and then he's, that's where you find them is you <laughs> dig a basement that's right oh. yeah well, it makes you think, what what are we blissfully unaware of? Aliens. Now? Aliens. Yeah, well, we are aware of them, maybe. Maybe now. Barely. But, but yeah, Barely. Not, not in the way that we are now of dinosaurs. Yeah. Generations ahead, I think, will be like, do you believe there's a time we really thought we were the only living creatures in the yeah. universe? You're going to look like buffoons. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. To go, yeah. And then there's aliens just flying, you know, and the alien gives us coffee. <laughs> so they they come here and work for us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think they you start. Know, they come here. They're unpaid interns. I think it's their vacation. Because I'd imagine what vacation you gonna they're gonna have. I think a vacation then would be some leisurely selling coffee. Oh, it's like a mission trip for them almost. <laughs> We're Habitat for Humanity. It's the Earth, if the aliens, and they're gonna come mission here. Mission trip. And, yeah, and they come down here and work. You gotta help these idiots yeah. out. Yeah, get them some coffee and stuff. I wonder if that could be that could be a pretty funny joke. Yeah. Have you ever heard that even now that people think that dinosaurs aren't weren't real? Yeah. Yeah, I know I yeah, heard I'm that. 50 50 on them to begin with. Yeah. I mean, I've heard people that based on the Bible because mm -hmm. there's no mention of it in the Bible. Right. I had a uh But they didn't know they were That would be the thing if they the founding fathers didn't find them either. Yeah, yeah. then whoever yeah, then who wrote the Bible, they they didn't know about them yet either. Well, God yeah. wrote the Bible. <laughs> Yeah, but like Noah's Ark or <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, I had a, a a minister when I was growing up that taught our Sunday school class who said that God just put those bones there to confuse us, to test our faith. Wow, because he didn't believe that was that was real. It worked, huh? Yeah, JJ Reddick. Uh, you guys oh, know JJ Reddick? Yeah, on his podcast to go back to back with those two. <laughs> <laughs> Get a local. <laughs> The story reminded me of J.J. Reddick, <laughs> his local pastor in uh, <laughs> Lebanon, Tennessee. Was he, were they both white? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, That's the that connection. Makes that makes sense. That's the connection. J.J. Reddick said on his podcast, he's not entirely convinced dinosaurs existed. He said, I'm not. I've come across some weird websites. The word dinosaur didn't exist until 1842. Yeah. There was no word dinosaur. And then all of a sudden, a guy finds some bones, and a few years later, people were finding them everywhere. Think to myself, all right, humans were here since 10,000 BC, and just now we're finding them. It makes you think. I don't think it does. Uh, <laughs> if it would be discovered, so it's like, so you think they went around and planted all the bones <laughs> of the dinosaurs? Yeah, I guess it wouldn't make sense. Like, that, uh -huh. I don't I, look, I'm all, I'm all about going to look at some weird website, yeah. And I'm all bored. If he doesn't believe in dinosaurs, I love it, yeah. yeah. I'd, yeah. I'd rather talk to him about not believing in dinosaurs than someone that does, yeah. but that doesn't doesn't make a lot of sense. That does doesn't it? like his, his, his statement for it. The is, argument it doesn't make sense that his, yeah. his big argument is they didn't have the word until it yeah. was discovered. It's like, yeah, they usually they didn't have any words. Usually you find out that something exists before you give it a yeah. name. Yeah. Usually yeah. that's the order. The word sky. 
They'd be like not believing in the sky, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There wasn't a word for sky until 10,000 yeah. years ago. So Guy looked up. He goes, you ever looked up? Yeah, what is this? Yeah, he goes, it's yeah, a, it's like nothing. It's a big no, no, sky. no, but I think there's something. Mm. <laughs> you got to call it <laughs> yeah, something. you got to call it something. <laughs> call and he goes, sky, 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 sky. 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 <laughs> okay. And then he tells everybody, <laughs> you know, puts it in a, in a dove. <laughs> Go that ironically flies yeah. in the sky yeah. to the other things, wow. to the other people. And it goes, Scott. And finally gets to J.J. Reddick's family. And, and it goes, <laughs> I don't know if I, <laughs> I don't know if I buy this. A dove is a, ironically a dinosaur, too. Birds. Oh, yeah. Birds are dinosaurs. They're like, there are, there are like live dinosaurs. Now. I think so. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that generally <clears throat> agreed on that they're, in the, for dinosaurs in the bird family, they're essentially dinosaurs. Yeah, them, but <laughs> who would disagree with them? JJ Reddick. JJ uh, Reddick for yeah. one. I don't know if it's generally agreed on. I don't know if we. Is there a topic that we all? What do you mean? I don't know. It's just a funny way to put it. Just to go. I think we all. It's agree. one of those. Things. I think everyone agrees that these doves are dinosaurs. Yeah, but it's one of those things that if if that wasn't the case, and I had said it so confidently, I would have felt like an idiot. So I needed to cover my bases. By saying, and be I like, we, I think, right, isn't I think that kind of you're the, sincerely asking? I think we can agree to disagree that it's <laughs> done. <laughs> okay, uh, generally agree. No, I just like the term, I like saying generally agree. I think that's yeah. funny, uh huh. To be like that big of a thing, I think generally we all agree that, right? Yeah, that, generally that all agree. Birds are, <laughs> I think birds that's how wars are started. <laughs> I think generally agree that we should be allowed to do whatever we want, and then you can't. Uh, <laughs> like, that's, I mean, generally agree, I think, is literally probably the start of every war. <laughs> you generally just, agree that communism's the way yeah, to go, <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> yeah, because, I don't know about generally some assumptions. Generally, yeah, this mm. says that scientists say dinosaurs lived on the earth. This says <laughs> he brought it. <laughs> yeah, we covered that, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just over here. I stumbled upon this paper. I found. Uh, <laughs> I discovered it. Yeah, I discovered it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Scientists say that dinosaurs lived on the earth for about 165 million years. Mm. Homo sapiens have lived here for 300,000 years. Okay. So they're making the point that dinosaurs lived here so much longer than we have. Yeah. We, oh, even now. Even now. Yeah. But they're dead. I went to- So we uh, got that going for us. Yeah. We're winning right now. Who wrote that? A dinosaur? <laughs> nah. <laughs> I don't know if I generally agree with that statement. <laughs> uh, the mountain gorilla wasn't discovered till 1902. I'm discovering it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Where's a mountain of gorilla? It's the a mountain gorilla? Yeah, it's a gorilla just in the mountain. I think it's the kind of gorilla that you're thinking of. Oh, really? And yeah. Like the main and one. I think we we touched on this a little bit in the when we were talking about Bigfoot, but but it, it was one of those creatures that had been kind of like seen and people thought it was a myth. Yeah. And then it it wasn't confirmed that it's a real thing until the early 1900s, 1908. I think you said 1902. Yeah. The 1902. WWF did it. World War Wrestling fell. <laughs> is that the same thing as the silverback? Vince, this is how wrestling got started. Uh, they goes, look at these know. big things. What if we had some big things fight? And then they got wrestling started. Did but you, you know too. that? Did you know? Do you ever hear that? It's generally you never heard that. This is how the big show got started. Generally agreed no, upon. It's not generally agreed upon. To me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it looks like the same thing. Silverback. A Real. silverback. Imagine. Okay, so imagine you're in the you're hanging out in the jungle. You hanging see out. that thing. Yeah. And you have to explain that you've never seen anything like that. Yeah. You yeah. have to explain. It's it. a monster. You're gonna sound like somebody describing Bigfoot. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. You it's a, you'd be a, it's a monster. We just saw a monster. Right. Which what if the Bigfoot stuff is still just these gorillas? It's still just more like still gorillas. the story of how we described these gorillas. Is the linger the story of these gorillas is still lingering, but we've moved everybody just thinks it's not talking about gorillas, yeah. And so we're all just repeating the same story that they did, but now because no one thinks they're like, Well, it's not gorillas, you're like, No, but it was, yeah. And well, they've kept going with the story, so now it's well, we know gorillas exist, right. so now it's, now it's generally agreed upon that gorillas exist. What if I just but it, figured everything out? <laughs> that, that'd be, That's pretty have. good, it does make a lot of sense that the story of Bigfoot has now become a thing. Because you go out, you go out in the woods, you can hear anything. Mm -hmm. You can hear anything you want to hear. Pretty crazy. Yeah. Your your mind can do whatever. Yeah. And so we've just convinced ourselves. And if you believe that it's you know, I mean, everybody says they saw one, I guess. Mm -hmm. But yeah. 
Do you know. think did they catch one and bring it bring it into the town? The gorilla? Yeah. No. No, I don't think so. I think they just how they found go out, to the zoo. Found it. Well, I mean, eventually, I don't think that first guy caught one and brought it in. I think they just found out where they live, and then other people started going to see it. Oh, okay. Once they found who? Yeah, who talked to him? One of them talked to him, right? Some somebody. Jane Robin Goodall. Williams. Jane Goodall. Robin Williams and Robin Williams. <laughs> yeah, we sent Robin Williams. <laughs> what? And we sent him to the gorillas. Yeah. We did. Yeah. Yeah. He did the 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 joke. He made the gorilla laugh, right? Yeah. 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 It's a pretty special guy. Robin <laughs> Williams. It's kind of crazy when you think yeah. about it. Yeah. It's almost kind of weirdly you're like, yeah, it makes sense. I know, yeah. It it's does like a very sweet. Yeah, his sweetness and kindness like transcends yeah. the human race. Yeah. The uh Komodo dragon wasn't discovered till nineteen ten. Everyone thought it was another, uh, like they thought it was a just a wives' tale, just a made up thing. Until they went to the this island where they live and found them and realized it was a real thing. Hello, they welcomed them. Hello, <laughs> oh, you oh. exist. Hello, folks. Yeah, use a young. There's a young Komodo young. dragon. Let's go. <laughs> and he's their button heads or whatever they do, hitting each other with tails. <laughs> Because, oh gosh, they're Komodo dragons. Yeah. This is right after dinosaurs have been kind of uh, a thing talked about, right? So then you show, imagine showing up with Komodo dragons. Yeah. And everyone's like, these dinosaurs used to exist. And then they're like, nah, some of them are still around. Yeah. I think they'd be even more impressive if we didn't have alligators or crocodiles. But they look different. They're pretty impressive. I mean, they are different. They are, but I mean, but you're right. They're we've not, seen reptiles. They're not unheard of. Yeah. But where, but you don't see them here. But they're 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 super dangerous. Like, uh, with their tails and stuff too. What do their tails do? They can just hit you with it. I don't know. They don't even have tails. Oh, you know what? I was thinking about the wrong thing. Uh, <laughs> Were you really? <laughs> no. They uh, have no. Tails too. Yeah. Are they super dangerous? Yeah. Their tails are. Yeah. I mean, their 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 mouths are just filled with. Uh, I mean, just all the viruses. Mm-hmm. I mean, basically everything. Yeah, uh, COVID, COVID, <laughs> flu, common cold, yeah, uh, headache, gout, <laughs> dyslexia, <laughs> dyslexia. You get everything. You get bit by one of these things. You get everything. <laughs> you go to a doctor and he's like, "I don't even." Where do I start? <laughs> and you go penicillin, and he goes, "Yeah." <laughs> and he goes, "We're past penicillin." <laughs> you have to get a bunch of stuff. The uh, the giant squid had been a myth for years. Pe- sea captains have been saying they've seen this giant, uh, uh, they called it the Kraken. Probably the least listened to person is a sea captain. <laughs> I what, mean, what do, you, what do you mean? Just the nonsense that guy comes off. Uh, you, you just picture, like, I, don't, I think they're drunk the whole time. A yeah. sea captain? Yeah. You picture them being drunk. A modern day sea captain? Or like just. Uh, yeah, I think all the. You go have a carnival cruise, you see some of the routes they're taking. You go tell me that game having a little a sip. <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, like a sea captain, like, you know, going back, oh, there's a giant squid, and you're like, oh, God. Uh, yeah, all right, buddy. Don't you think, like, those, those sea captains then just no one took them serious? Like, they go, you know what I've seen out there? And yeah. you go, I don't, no one cares. Mm-hmm. Pirates. Yeah, probably a scurvy. You know, like, this guy's not healthy. Yeah. You know, how big are they? Uh, I don't. The first giant squid was seen in live in the early two thousands. Yeah, that's how recent it's been. They've been talking about it for decades. I mean, for centuries. And then, Jeez. they would find some occasionally washed up, but they didn't have video of them till the early two thousands. That's yeah. pretty big. And that they're significantly bigger than a human being. Yeah, Damn. yeah, but I mean, it's like a bus. Yeah, yeah, it is like the size of a bus. They're. Uh, that's where. That's an alien swimming. I know. Is that a man or a woman? So, I think he just gave birth to an alien. Maybe that's how they give them. Maybe that's how the aliens are born. I don't know. That could be wildly offensive to say in <laughs> to, to 100 who? years. Imagine in 100 years they're going to go, they said they thought the, uh, what is this? A Giant squid, squid. Gave birth to the alien. Mm-hmm. Alien that serves me my coffee? Yeah. Can you believe that they said that back in this? <laughs> And then I just you get canceled. Yeah, my family's canceled. <laughs> yeah. Like they, you know, 
<laughs> you got to take down Nate Land theme park. <laughs> Nate Land theme park actually got built. I couldn't believe it. Out of, and we're actually, and it's all, it gets taken down. All of it. All of it. They drum up this. <laughs> um, the first exoplanet, planet outside our solar system, wasn't discovered till 1992. And now we've discovered more than 4,000 of them. A uh, planet outside of our our solar system. And they think there's billions and billions of them now. They think yeah, that... It's easy to say. Just in the Milky Way or in general? Just in the Milky Way. They think that for every star probably has, on average, one planet. Ours has, what, seven? <laughs> Eight, right? I don't know. You have eight planets. Oh, we have oh planets. Yeah. Oh, start. Uh, we yeah we eight. We used to thought we had nine because of Pluto. Yeah. Okay, so we we're had, all kind of forgetting Pluto quite easy. Who right. did you? Which one did you forget? I just couldn't remember if the number Venus. was seven or eight. I wasn't yeah. naming them. Mercury. Off. I just okay. I always forget Mercury. Mercury. Well, who cares about Mercury? Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing going on. You there. know, weirdly, I forget about Neptune. I don't know why. <laughs> I always think it's a diner because I've been to a Neptune diner and I never and I never put it as a planet. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> Pluto. Not a joke. My Pluto yeah. joke. Uh-huh. But that would be, see, that's what I mean. These scientists, yeah. you know, they, you can just say whatever. Dude. Like, who cares? Like, they, they go, we believe there's probably billions. Okay. Mm-hmm. No way for Who's us to ever, count it. No. Nobody can. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that there's not, but it's like just being like, yeah, dude, it's nuts. I would like them to go like, I we don't know, but it's it's probably wild, dude. Right. It's, I <laughs> here's where we at. I quit the job because I can't. It's just it's more than I care to know. And I'm doing ocean stuff now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what the guy said. Ocean stuff. And I'm doing. Yeah, he left. The, <laughs> that's what the scientist left. And he, I'm doing. Ocean I'm mainly stuff. doing ocean stuff now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then, uh, but I do think for the argument of life on other planets, I mean, we've already found 4,000 yeah. planets just outside our solar system, and there's so many stars out there. If right. they do all have a few planets, mm-hmm. there's bound to be life out there somewhere. Wouldn't you think? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I've talked about it. Yeah, we, we were saying we're fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, it's bizarre. It's bizarre, yeah, to not yeah. think that, uh. Some the ocean's st- probably where the most stuff is that we don't, you know. There's so much stuff we don't know. Yeah. That's quid. That's crazy. It's a pretty big, imagine misplacing, like, it's like not finding uh, your bus. couch in yeah. your house. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you walked in, you go, dude, our, that couch, it was in the closet. Yeah. It's like 40 years. <laughs> it was in the, the love seat was in the closet. Never saw it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what that's like. Like, it's just giant thing. So yeah. big. Uh, some celebrities that were discovered in usual ways. Justin Bieber. In unusual, oh, in unusual ways. Yeah. In 2007, he participated in a local singing competition. He placed second. And his mom posted a video of his performance on YouTube for family and friends who weren't able to attend. She also put up some other homemade videos. And then Scott Scooter Braun, music promoter and talent agent, watched them, invited Bieber to come to Atlanta. He met Usher. And they sign him, and the rest is history. Where is he? Did where's he at now? Yeah, yeah. What's that they, guy doing uh, now? Yeah. Uh, Scooter Braun's a Shays person too. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He was kind of the first YouTube, mm-hmm. and uh, still does it. I mean, still just. I mean, that's like someone we talk. They have no. He has, you know, his reality. I mean, you make more money than your parents. Like you're like wildly more money than your than mm-hmm. your family. Mm-hmm. Like the dynamic there has got to be, how old was he? 12, 13? 13. 13. The dynamic is just crazy. And you're, you know, those, people, they're, they're, those kids that are just so young. But he seems kind of normal now. How old is he now? Mm-hmm. Oh, he's, I think he's a couple years younger than me. He's like mid to late 20s now. Oh. Maybe 25, 26. Yeah. Yeah, I think pretty, I think he leveled out pretty. They're all going to go through that. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. He, they, he's 27. Gotta, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they go through all the stuff they go through. He and then figured it out. Uh, yeah, they figure. Yeah, he's married. Post Malone is only twenty five. Yeah, he's a young dude. Wow, what? <laughs> he looks like he's. He 100. looks a little. Let me tell older you what than... is. It's drinking. Yeah, that's Post Malone's a perfect example of partying and drinking beer every night. 
That's it's your tattoos. number one example is Post Malone. This is what you end up looking like. <laughs> that I yeah that but it is like the when I when it was in New York and when we were out we were drinking every single night. My old videos you can see all the old stuff that I post. That's all just because you're you know it's not like you're you're just having some beers every night. Uh huh. That stuff. That's what happens, and that's Post Malone. That guy's twenty five years old. That's I look like that. <laughs> and that's and then you stop drinking and you look if Post Malone quit drinking, he would look amazing. Look his face, yeah. like ev- everything, alcohol just all that stuff goes away. It just kind of comes in a little bit. You can still get it eating bad, obviously. Mm-hmm. Like I've still I've not like I've lost everything, but it's like you just get sucked up a little bit without alcohol. You don't you don't get that's that's I I mean you know I don't get. Post blown people get mad, but they're but I that's what that I mean I just can see it. Yeah, I, that's crazy. Fair yeah. guy to be twenty five. Yeah, I thought he was. 40. I didn't know. I didn't know he was that young either. I thought he was at least my age. Yeah, I thought he was forty. Yeah, I, thought, I mean, like, yeah, it's not. <laughs> wow, pre, I would have uh, pre Malone used some different. <laughs> I would use some uh, what? So he's pre Malone. Yeah, I would have. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, he's post. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should just I mean, be in the Malone phase, but yeah, he's already posted. He's, yeah, he's. Uh, <laughs> why is he post Malone? Uh, I don't know. I'll look into that. His first name's po- Aust- Austin, Austin Richard, Richard Post. Post. Oh, huh. that's a great name, Austin Richard Post. So where'd the Malone A-R-P. come from? Yeah, Austin Post. Even if he was Austin Post would be a pretty good rap name. Austin Richie Post. I mean, Austin Richard Post is a really good name. Austin's a good name. Uh, all right. Uh, Taylor Swift. No. Oh. Mm-hmm. When Taylor Swift was, well, there's two diversions. This, when Taylor, she says when she was 12, she was doing her homework and a computer technician came to her house to work on her computer. He saw her guitar in the corner and he says, do you play guitar? And she says, uh, no, I've tried. He said, well, do you want me to teach you a few chords? And she said, uh, yeah. And then he's the one that made her in who she is today. Sounds like a real creep. What's the next? How story? did he make her into? Well, like, he's, he's, he's the one that got her started. Like, yeah. learn to play guitar and write songs and stuff like that. <laughs> they, he continued to work with her? That's, that's her version. His version is she hired him... Uh, <laughs> to give her guitar lessons. And after a few lessons, he also works on computers and said, I can fix your computer for you. Uh, that makes way more that sense. That makes more sense. That's the story I'd prefer than like... Yeah. You would almost like, think it'd be the other way around. Imagine them inviting like the plumber over and he's like, hey, little girl, you got a guitar Doing over the there? Corner? Can you play any chords yeah. for me to teach you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I have a problem with uh, a 20-year-old doing that to a 20-year-old girl. <laughs> yeah. I already yeah. don't like... He pulls out a guitar. That's pulling out a guitar at a party is 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 like uh, the uh, we'll get to that eventually. That's what that feels like to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you see a guy pull out a guitar and you're like, oh my, you don't like it. I do not like yeah. it. You did it all the time, didn't you? No, no. Oh, it would, you that, worse the piano. On. You had to wheel the piano in the <laughs> xylophone other room. Xylophone. You had to go get their piano, and they're like, "Guys, can I get a hand?" <laughs> and then y'all have to carry it into the like little short steps because you can't really move a piano because it's awkward. I was in a. I mean, I played in a group and yeah. all through high school and stuff, but I would never bring a guitar to a party and like pull it out and, and just play Wonderwall. And yeah, 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 I was never that guy. Those guys did exist. They oh, still yeah. do. They still, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how well, Dave Matthews got started. He was just a guy at a no, party. <laughs> I don't know. His stuff, his songs are always the one that gets right, played. Right. For, my, for my age, it was always Dave Matthews. He was discovered at a house party. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just tried it enough. Yeah. You know, you go play enough and someone finally gets it. I bet that guy's truth is, like, I bet she was so young that she thinks. Maybe so. They had a fall. I mean, supposedly he helped her write the song Lucky You, maybe her first song. Mm-hmm. But they had a falling out. He created a website, stuff I've taught Taylor Swift, and she sued him and all this stuff. Yeah, he, she's got a lot of that. Yeah. yeah. He tells a story about her brother, Austin. Is that the one you know? Yeah. Oh. Austin. Uh, Speaking of Austin. Austin Post. Oh, says, that's his name? Austin Swift. It's Post Malone. Why don't you bring that up? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he says when he was at her house teaching her lessons, her mom would say, he said her brother, Austin, who was a little chubby at the time. Austin. Maybe he saw 
<laughs> Are we sure? He goes. <laughs> He goes, no, maybe it was her friend. <laughs> maybe it was Austin's buddy. He was wearing a Notre Dame jacket. <laughs> uh, Austin, who's a little chubby at the time, and he wanted to go to Taco Bell. And the guy said, Taylor Swift's mom, Taylor said, I want to go to Taco Bell too. And her mother said, um, I'm only going to let Austin go because nobody wants to fee- see a fat pop star. Wait, the guy said that? The, Taylor's mom said that. Yeah. To Taylor, she wanted to go to Taco Bell, and, yeah. and she said nobody wants. To this is back. stuff that that guy said posted yes. on his website. He's stuff mm-hmm. that he observed. He said, yeah. "Yeah, so that seems a little yeah." yeah. But I mean, that would I would go with like, I mean, her her mom and they're still talk, right? Like, oh yeah, yeah, they're, they're yeah. super I'm, close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but once she moved to Nashville, she did a round showcase at the Bluebird Cafe in 2005, and there was a guy there, Scott Borchetta, who was launching a new record label called Big Machine Records. And he saw her and signed her to a record deal. And her dad bought 3% stake in the company for estimated $120,000. Hmm. So I guess he believed in his daughter. And of course, the big machine took off. Yeah. Mainly because of her. And they're big. Yeah. And so yeah. they made a ton of money. Her dad made a ton of money off I would that. think so, yeah. That guy's name is Bruschetta? Yeah. Like yeah. the cheese? Isn't that a, is it a... Is it cheese? Borchetta? I think Wait. it's a type of something. I don't think it's a cheese. I think it's bread. <laughs> oh, bread? I think so. Or maybe pretzels. <laughs> you know, what? I was thinking that I was. Thinking, I was thinking like a Chex yeah. mix type. It's like the yeah. oh, that's Gardettos. Never mind. Oh. <laughs> Tostinos. Bruschetta's a. Oh, it says it's a dish. Oh, it's a chicken. <laughs> no, br- oh, that's what bruschetta is. <laughs> this is borchetta. Bruschetta is. Oh, it's a dish. It's not. It's like a bunch of stuff. It's a, yeah. It's an hors d'oeuvre of the bread with the. So it would have been the, quite embarrassing if they said. Do you want any of this? And I passed on bruschetta cheese. And they go, do you want some bruschetta? And I go, I'm on uh, no dairy, please. <laughs> and they go, okay. You're in a business meeting with that guy? Yeah. Oh, bruschetta, like the yeah, cheese, Yeah, like huh? the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, uh, uh, "No, we'll give you 1%. <laughs> <laughs> 50 grand, 1%. Never come back here until you saw it. Never said we talked ever again. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> Prosciutto cheese. Prosciutto cheese. <laughs> it does sound like, <laughs> sound like it could be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sam Phillips discovered Elvis Presley and Johnny Cash. That's pretty amazing. Two of the That's greatest of all time. Pretty good. Who is Sam Phillips? Is that the crazy manager? Didn't no, he have a crazy manager? It was Colonel Parker. Oh yeah, <laughs> Colonel Parker. Was he an actual colonel? He was or? like a ba- you know he was like a promoter or something. But I think was wild yeah like you know back in the day like they were you know that's the thing like taylor swift guy gets upset about her like deal and stuff like that but i mean these guys yeah were, i mean they got their whole life stolen yeah. yeah yeah now sam phillips ran sun records in memphis and okay have you ever seen walk the line yeah yeah oh there yeah yeah that, i remember that, that guy yeah yeah it's like a fun guy <laughs> it's like a nice fella he did well for himself. Yeah, he did all right. He found two uh, has-beens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Cash, I bet, was so much to just be around. <laughs> I mean, he had to be just like, oh, uh, mm-hmm. just the weight of the world at all times. I mean, just going off that movie. Yeah. I saw him filming something. I thought, I'm saying I've said that on here. Uh, no. In uh, Mount Juliet. Um, did they film it here? Was something he was filming something uh-huh. i drive by i'm going to my buddy's house nick newman driving to his house in mount juliet um like i don't know I'd, i just uh had to be driving so maybe i'm 17 or 18 or something like that uh so 96 7 some and uh eight maybe and then he's standing in the back of a train and i drive out there's just a railroad and there's a he's like at a caboose but there's not the whole train there. It's just the caboose. Oh, this is the real Johnny Cash. The real Johnny Cash. I thought Cash. you were talking about the movie. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. No, no. I mean the real Johnny Cash. Yeah. And I just drive by and I look and he's, uh, and it's him all in black. And I thought there was always rumors he, he had a house right there or something. He lived in Henderson. Yeah. Though. I know Yeah, that. but that one. But then I thought there was something. I don't know. But anyway, I see him just standing on the back of that caboose. Big, long, black trench coat. Just by himself? I think they were shooting something. <laughs> okay. I don't know what they were shooting. So he didn't even try to hide. What did, did they have the caboose in, uh, what's the last song? Uh, 
the the Nine Inch, Nine Inch Nail songs. song. Is he standing on a train in that? He might be in the album cover. Hurt. That yeah. Song. Yeah. Yeah. Look up that. It might album. be. Yeah. There's something about a train. Like it's because you know what? I don't know if I've ever looked it up. Uh, He's on like a railroad track. For that, that doesn't look like Mount Juliet though. Uh. I, I could cash. drive you to where it was. Look at a Caboose or something. Like that. <laughs> cash Caboose. Yeah, Johnny, Johnny Cash, cash Caboose. caboose. <laughs> Just put on some weight back there. All right. There is one. Yeah. I don't know. No, nothing yeah. Nothing that jumps That's out. That's all right. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a guy After dressed in black. Years. Yeah. Just one of the, yeah. Um, I'll be honest, a lot of people wore that stuff. Yeah, it's one of the Columbine <laughs> uh, kids. Just the gaff, yeah. goth kid, yeah. Uh, the Beatles manager wasn't happy with them. He thought they were going nowhere. So he wanted to find a better act. You talking about you, the Beatles manager now? I'm talking about, yes, I've moved on to the Beatles now. Oh, we just jumped right into it. Uh, <laughs> What? Did you? I didn't ever hear you say this is the Beatles manager. I, I didn't. I've just, he, did. just, he didn't. Oh, I just went into it. Oh. I thought we were yeah. done. Uh, uh, so the Beatles manager, yep, never thought they would make it. So another guy uh, asked to sign them as their manager. He he was a beginner and never done it, but he be- immediately began working on raising their profile in and outside of Liverpool. Cleaned mm-hmm. up their image, told them to stop swearing, smoking, eating on stage during performances, which is funny to think they were eating, eating, while yeah. performing. Yeah, you can't order a sandwich like during the show. And that's crazy that I have to tell you all that. Like, like, can you imagine? like that's just what he has to. Uh, I think it's insane that you can't have a plate of spaghetti during a uh, performance. You ever eaten on stage before? Uh, no. I'm trying to maybe if I've taken a bite of something or mm-hmm. if just maybe if there's like a birthday. No. Oh, like, no. Mm. Uh, not for a joke, but like if there was like a birthday or something or there was. Yeah. No. Something. No, why would you? I don't know. I was just wondering. They had to calm the Beatles down. They wouldn't have made it. I feel like you've beaten a few times on stage. <laughs> what you're leading to, have you? No. I've done themed shows where you have to eat. Oh, hot chicken yeah, or we something? Did the, we did the hot chicken show where you eat hot chicken and yeah. then do a set. Yeah. And uh, I enjoyed it. I mean, of course. <laughs> They're... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> had a terrible set, but... <laughs> <laughs> Didn't yeah. evening. Yeah, they hated it, but I <laughs> yeah. loved it. Yeah. The biggest you have thing to go with is that when you have to adjust your feeding window <laughs> when you know you're about to do that show. <laughs> yeah, I got it in just that morning. Time. You uh, you slide the little timer up. <laughs> you have a chart. Slide it up. Slide couple it up hours. A couple hours. <laughs> yeah, I would. That's what I would do. Yeah, that's what I did today. So this guy discovered the Beatles, and they made him. The biggest thing he did, he replaced Pete Best with Ringo Starr. He changed the drummer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, what did out. Pete Best do? Where did he did? Because he's still famous. Like, I think he's just famous as the fifth Beatle that got oh. removed. Did he ever go play somewhere else? I think I looked him up, and he's tried to do. He's just like a, a session musician for, but he never obviously just wasn't that. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. But I wonder if he ever, uh, I mean, he's still pretty, you're acting like he's did nothing, and I think he did some stuff. I don't think he did anything uh, in comparison to playing with the Beatles. I mean, he had to, because he didn't do much. He was a lifelong career musician. He started his yeah. own band called the Pete Best Four, and joined and started many other bands over the years, but obviously nothing compared to what the Beatles yeah. did. But he had like, you know. Man, that's tough. I mean, you would think he would be. Is he not? If he's not good enough to be in there, is he good enough to be in? You know, Rolling Stone. Like, is there not? Mm-hmm. And it was probably just something about his image or something that they. I mean, more than his skill as a drummer, I would. I would think. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's just. He just didn't have that X factor. Yeah. That that superstar, whatever that is, that they all had. Guess he yeah. just didn't have it. Too bad. So this manager changed all this stuff, got him booked on the Ed Sullivan show in the US and Beatlemania swept the world. Yeah. So yeah. That the first rest manager. Is history. Bigger than Jesus. That's what they said. 
Really? The Beatles. Who says that? I think it was in John, what term? John Lennon or Paul McCartney was like. Oh, one of them. What? <laughs> what do you mean? That's who said it. Yeah. <laughs> what do you? What do you? Mean? Uh, it's just funny. Like I thought it was gonna be someone else, and like where it's a ridiculous statement, and then it's like they. No, they said it about themselves. Yeah, yeah more were more popular than Jesus. John Lennon said it in a 1966 interview. Yeah. Bigger than Shaq? <laughs> I don't know. More popular than Oprah <laughs> and the Queen. <laughs> yeah. Is this what they're saying? Uh, uh, he wasn't murdered. Uh, because of this? Yeah. I don't know. No, this, I mean, this was a long time before he got yeah. assassinated. So yeah, I know, but that's what it's saying. It said he was murdered by Mark David Chavin. Chavin later stated that he was motivated partly by Lennon's remarks oh. on religion, including the more popular than How Jesus. About it? How about there you it? Go. The exact opposite of what I was about to say. I mean, the main thing that did it was that. Wow. Yeah. No, don't say that. Hmm. Uh, Bo Burnham. Do you know Bo Burnham? Yeah. Yeah. He uh, posted some videos on YouTube when he was sixteen, filmed in his bedroom. And then he became the youngest comic with the Comedy Central special. Went to Just for Laughs Montreal in 2008. I was there. Was yeah. he a teenager he? then? Yeah. He was 16. 16. That's crazy. That was the year I went to Montreal. You, you were New Faces that, that was year? New Faces. Wow. wow. And uh, he was, uh, yeah, Bo's very nice. And I like Bo. Bo is one, Bo's one of the more original people I've ever seen. And he just has, he has a new special out. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's just, I mean, he's just like a super talented dude, man. Like super, he, I mean, his, his specials are all, I, I just love what he does. And like, it's, uh, it's its own thing. And I'm way on board with that. Uh, but I was in New Faces when he got it. I remember his parents were there with him. He was 16. He was all anybody talked about. Yeah. He was, that was it. He was, was the just, talk you know, of the festival. He was, I mean, he was the talk of everything. Yeah. Because he was like blowing up and like all that stuff. And then, I mean, he's, his career has just been pretty flawless in the fact that everything he's done is, he's just a super talented guy where he's directed, you know, Chris Rock's, or he did Chris Rock's special. He did uh, Gerard Carmichael's special. Directed uh, in a movie eight, called Eighth Grade. Eighth Grade. Yeah, which was great. Which, yeah, yeah. it was. Which won probably won a bunch of stuff. Not was it nominated? It should have. It should have. I think it was nominated. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, and just a, a bunch of stuff. But yeah, I mean, he was sixteen. I remember, like, yeah, I don't talk to him. I've text. I'll text with him some. I've, I've seen him when I go out there some. But like, we, mm -hmm. he's always very nice. He lives in L.A. Lives in L.A. Yeah, always very nice. And but he's, uh, yeah, I mean, just, just a different person. I mean, just yeah. a different. It's a. Yeah. Uh, the very one of a kind kind of guy, yeah. I think. But I remember it, it was all anybody talked about at Just for Laughs. And that was the year I was there. Oh, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Do you guys, uh, I was trying to think of some athletes that were discovered like some crazy way. Mm -hmm. uh, I found one, well, one from watching PTI the other day, Mark Eaton, who passed away a few weeks ago. You guys know Mark Eaton? Yeah. He was working at a mechanic shop. Making twenty thousand dollars a year, he was seven foot four, <laughs> working in a mechanic shop. A chemistry professor who was an assistant basketball coach at a small college encouraged him to enroll in this. Did he, sorry, did he have to lay down on the wheel thing even when it was jacked up? Like it was like he still <laughs> still has to lay down. His arms are way up that high. <laughs> then they go. He's still on like, the skateboard. Yeah, thing. the skateboard thing, and <laughs> and there's a guy standing underneath it full, and he's he's up there fixing it. I bet it could, you could have found someone that he could have done that with. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. I bet. Like someone that's like 5'4". Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he uh, encouraged him to try out the small community college, and then the, the guy went on to be an NBA All-Star, two-time Defensive Player of the Year for the Utah Jazz. Wow. He was working in a mechanic shop. That's one of those, I mean, discovery. If you walk in anywhere and there's a seven foot four guy, don't you immediately think, that guy can play basketball. Well – it's probably a tough situation because uh, they, you, you're worried that they that's all they get asked. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, you don't want to go like, hey, man, why don't you go try basketball? He's like, I did, and it didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, I thought to play yeah, basketball. Yeah, I mean, so the odds of that, he's like, all right, I guess I'll go try it. 
But back then, there's no internet or stuff like so. It probably would very you could still say stuff like that, and a guy might not know. Right now, with like phones and internet, I mean, they go to other countries and they find people and they're like, "Hey, we think you should." You know, Festus Zeely was like that for Vandy. Mm-hmm. Uh, where'd they get him he, from? Some African yeah. country. And then he never played until senior year of high school. Yeah, maybe? I think senior year in high school. Then comes and gets drafted in the NBA. Like ends up becoming just a dominant player like well Hakeem Olajuwon was like that he played soccer he was a goalie and he was great at soccer and handball didn't play basketball until he was a senior in high school after a Nigerian basketball coach spotted him and said you should try playing he basketball. emailed him Nigerian basketball coach emailed him <laughs> and said if you send me all your uh if you give me all your uh, I'm a prince <laughs> I'm a prince and I got some money I need to get transferred over to and you go wait a second <laughs> But, I mean, Hakeem Olajuwon went on to be obviously one of the greatest players of all time. Yeah. Of all time. I mean, uh, he's respected as being the greatest, but I mean, I still don't think he gets as much as he deserves. Like, he's better than – I mean, the way like Kobe went and worked with him, all these people still go work with him. Hakeem? Yeah. Like, they would all these, you know, uh, like former pros, like the stuff that he was doing. I mean, it, it was pretty crazy. He was unbelievable. Yeah. The um, the kicker, I think this is him, Kyle Brinza, maybe. Yeah, the kicker at Notre Dame was he played in the intramural leagues. He was a kicker. We played against him, and some somebody somebody on the varsity team saw him and was like, "Oh, he might actually be good." And then he played on the real football team. Yeah, but he was just a nobody kicking. I think Kyle Brinza, either him or somebody else. I can't remember. I feel like yeah. there's a lot. I would, of, I would think that'd be in the Wikipedia page. Yeah, mm-hmm. that'd be pretty crazy if they missed. They didn't put that in. Like in a way, they're like, "This guy was a great kicker for Notre Dame." <laughs> and you know, oh, that's cool, man. Oh, one thing we forgot. Uh, he was just kicking like on a sidewalk, <laughs> and they found him. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> "That's the main. That's why Wikipedia's invented uh-huh. is for yeah, that. Right. Is for specifically that reason." Yeah. Yeah. I'll find it. But I thought it said he just in that it kicked his freshman year for Notre Dame. Yeah, is it? I think it said that it did, but it didn't say anything about intramural football. Oh, okay. So well, you, oh yeah. Um, we'll take his name out. Oh, David Ruffer. Yeah, it was David Ruffer. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Oh God. <laughs> there was a. I mean, imagine just sitting like. Listen to this podcast, and, you, and someone goes, "God, they got quiet." You go, "I know." And they go, "Well, at least what are they looking to find? An intramural <laughs> field goal kicker for Notre Dame <laughs> in the nineties. This is the worst episode of Aaron Land yet. Dude. Aaron I Land think. is yeah. Aaron Land's struggling. Aaron Land lost some. We might have lost might've, some of the heat. He lost some of the heat. <laughs> You got it. That IG account might try to start separating it, separating from. Becomes the, Batesville next yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're like, yeah. you're like Batesville. We're just trying different other things. There was a uh, a punter in Australia. I think a lot of punters, Aust- yeah, come from punter. Australia. This guy wasn't even trying to punt. He wasn't even punting in Australia. He found a football, and they were just playing with his buddies. And there was an American there that was driving by and asking him if he played. He's like, no. And he shot some video of him and up YouTube clips and said some colleges. And this guy got a scholarship to Sam Houston State and went on kick in the NFL. What's his name? Lack Edwards, L A C Edwards. Lack. I don't know Lack. that's how you pronounce it. Lock. Lock. Lack. Latch. Lack is almost <laughs> Latch. <laughs> Latch key kid. L- Lack is almost an insult. This is his first name. I bet it's like his family didn't want him. Yeah. I bet it's a lot. This kid's going to kids be missing a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But he was just literally playing with his buddies when the guy sp- spotted him. Mm. I feel like there are examples of, I hear all the time, although I couldn't find any, of someone saying, I was watching a recruit, a video of someone else, and I spotted this guy, and that guy goes on to be a star. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Michael Orr from The Blind Side, was he like that? I think we talked about this. I can't remember it. I can't remember the exact story, but I from the book it was like his his discovery was kind of a fluke because his video was trash or something, and then it, it was like a running backs video. I can't remember the exact story, but uh, yeah, 
<laughs> I mean, that was nothing. That was 45 seconds of nothing. I was, I was, I was <laughs> trying just, to get Batesville to, to start up over yeah, here, but yeah, I, uh, yeah you're a commercial cr- break, I guess. I'm trying to get you to buy me some time yeah. <laughs> so I can find I do, something else. You know what I do? That does make sense that... Uh, <laughs> that that happened, but I can't remember for sure if that was the thing that <laughs> I believe it was that Aaron was that told me that. that. Uh, yeah, but we, I do think there's stu- there's we definitely stories out. like that. We had a conversation off camera about that, and I remember <laughs> the conclusion being, "I'm not sure. Maybe let's not talk about yeah. it." Oh. And then you threw it to me. So. Uh, yeah, I thought the conclusion I was, was you're going to get on that. All I was right, try- I was doing the best I could, <laughs> but I don't. Yeah. All right, I'm back to the front. <laughs> We're done. We can be done. Well, no, we, I mean, we, is there Velcro? Oh. Does <laughs> <laughs> anybody want to hear how Velcro was invented? If you, I mean, if you already, if you already, unre- you already pulled it apart, <laughs> might as well hear how it got made. A guy was on a hiking trip, Swiss engineer. He found burrs clinging to his pants and to his dog's fur. On closer inspection, he found the burr's hook would cling to anything loop-shaped. And so he artificially rec- recreated the loops, and it became Velcro. Mm. Pretty solid. That's okay. an invention. Oh, he discovered, I guess he just discovered accidentally. it by accidentally. Yeah. Yeah. Probably every invention is like that. Yeah, I would say yeah. so. Yeah. I feel like your dad's uh, magic probably has some of that, right? Like yeah. he's trying stuff, and then... Yeah. And then they, yeah. What... <laughs> Do you think you have? <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's just nothing answers. I think so. So, so it's just been nothing answers. Yeah. I'll try. One more. Do you think what point in your career do you think you were most discovered? Hmm. I can tell you when I lost it. <laughs> this episode. In this episode. <laughs> Would it be uh, your first Netflix? Probably the most discovered. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I would think so. More so than the actual the hour specials after that. Like almost I think it's Tennessee Kid. It's That's, gotta be the even more than the stand ups. Yeah. As when there's the most. But I but I think that's where a comic is you're I think it's gathering. You're gathering just a lot. Mm-hmm. And so like a lot of people do know before, but the it's like the most where you kind of are in like a little more, I guess, mainstream of a kind of thing, I guess. I mean, you know Bo Bur- Burnham, but you met him at Just for Last, right? I think so. I mean, I, yeah. you didn't know him beforehand. No. Has there been a case of New York comic a friend of yours who almost blew up overnight, discovered somehow? Uh, I mean, I remember, his, uh, like, I don't know, the friends, but I remember Aziz, Aziz and Sorry. Aziz yeah, yeah. and Sorry was doing, uh, open mics we were doing open mics together and then he was like next thing i knew he was on that human giant show and then he was hosting the mtv movie awards and it was like what i remember we got past the comedy cellar and we're and it was just like he was gone uh schumer amy amy was kind of around we're all doing kind of whatever shows and then she gets on howard stern and she started like you know last comic and then it was just like and like just super super famous kumail Najiani, yeah. I mean that was uh, Kumel. I remember, I remember from New York. I mean from Chicago, and then we go to. Uh, then I remember he comes to New York, and I think he was already doing maybe a one man show or something. I thought someone said, and it was like, all right, he's like doing something, and then, uh, and then I would just see him at like festivals and stuff from there on out. And then it was like he just like started. He got that show. Then it just was like, shh, mm-hmm. now he's. Huge movie star. Is yeah. it possible for someone just to like have one great set at a, a showcase or audition and just change the career? I mean, the big one, Stephen Wright was with Carson. His uh, They asked him to come back. Carson like asked him maybe two or three times. Oh, yeah. Like the next night? Yeah. Yeah. Like the next night to come back. And so that was a big one for – as like I, I don't know Stephen Wright, but Carson was the discovery for comedians. And that I think Stephen Wright had a – pretty unique like he was like come back and he came back and then destroyed the second time and i think like he had to you know go try set out and all this stuff i mean the pressure of that he did the panel in one of them and he was and he was so crazy 
Yeah. Like, such a weird character. It was hilarious. Yeah. 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 And it's like, I mean, that's uh, so many people were watching that show back then. Like, yeah. uh, uh, I'm For, trying to think anybody's, you know. Well, Freddie Prinze was another example on Carson. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, I mean, he had a great set and basically had a TV show offer just immediately afterwards. Mm-hmm. And he was like 19, right? He was, he was very young. young. Yeah. I would say, I mean, I, for me, Fallon seeing my set was that yeah. put everything in motion. I mean, yeah. that was, yeah. It was like stuff was still going good. It's not, that's the thing is like when someone makes it or someone, they have a thing, it's not like they, they are just like, I mean, you're not my, you know, eating where you're fixing a car right, and then right, they pull right. you out. You're, you have a career and you're doing stuff. And then when Fallon came in and saw me randomly at that club, I mean, that's when it all just kind of changed. Like it all, I was then I got with him. I started doing that show. We started selling TV. You know, it started, we tried to pitch TV shows. We started selling TV shows. It's like you just got it. I got into a new world and like you're, so that, I mean, Fallon was, for me, that would be that. He yeah. came in, he saw that set. But that's the, what they always say, it's like preparation meets opportunity. Opportunity. And like, and I, it's weird to talk about this and I'm talking about it, but I don't know how else how to do it. You guys have not made it. But I can <laughs> I can talk about it from an outsider because I remember when that yeah. happened for you. Yeah. And you were already, I mean, like you said, you were already doing great uh in your career, but it was uh it was it was the week between Christmas and New Year's. Yeah. And uh and you were at the stand and I went to Vanderbilt's bowl game uh that same day or yeah. the day next day and you called me and you said yeah. you told me about it and it just then one thing started happening after another and it just kind of Snowball. It's kind of snowballed. And the same thing with Netflix. I mean, <clears throat> I was with you in Seattle the weekend of the stand-ups came out. Yeah. And immediately started seeing more turnout. And by the time you did Tennessee Kid, you were already, uh, I feel like, selling out theaters or at least getting close. We were about to start. I was going to be able to do some of the easy theaters. Like the, you know, Chicago, there's the Vic. Wilbur at in Boston. Uh both are amazing theaters. It's not like they're hard theaters, but it's like theaters that have, they have a following. Yeah. The theater does and people, and they're great, great comedy towns. Uh, so you could do some, I was starting to be able to do some stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So by the yeah. time you taped to see kid, it didn't seem out of place that you're performing in front of a sold out theater. Cause you kind of been building up to that. Yeah. But then to your point, it just accelerates. It. Yeah. yeah. Even when you, when Mark Marin saw you. Yeah. Um, was that Gilda's? Gilda's Laugh Festival. And he tweeted about you. Yeah. That seemed like it made a difference too. Just people recognize who you are. Yeah, that's where it's all kind of, it, 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 it all like compiles on itself, like where you're, uh, where that happens. Yeah, when he tweeted that, that was like when Twitter like uh, mattered. Mattered. <laughs> yeah. Like you, like the retweets were. When was this? This was years ago? Gilda's Festival. Yeah. This was like, yeah. uh, 2010, 2011? Mm-hmm. Something like that? Yeah. Mm. And he uh, said that... Uh, did he call you the wrong name? Uh, he called me, yeah, Nate or, or Nick. Nick. But he mentioned me, and then I did the podcast not too long Not too long after, after that. that. But he said he's one of the funniest comedians he's seen yeah. in years. Yeah, I don't think he called me Nick on Twitter. I think he, he like, added me correctly. Right. But uh-huh. he's like... oh, But, he's, but yeah, he was like... A, uh, yeah, he said something like that. It was one of the funniest comics he's seen in years. And he's never really said anything like that. Right. And uh, and his podcast was huge. And it just, you know, he's kind of going. And then that was that was uh, when it all kind of started. Like it was, uh, mm. that was, a, that was a, it was a big, big thing. Like a lot of people, you know. Yeah. I mean, I remember getting texts. I remember getting. That's cool. Everybody going crazy. They're like, dude, he just tweeted about you. And that was, I mean, dude, Twitter was. It just meant way more. Like, yeah, and I feel like at that time, WTF was the closest thing we had to Carson. Yeah, as far as just validating the comic, mm-hmm. right? Rogan was not quite what it is. No, no I mean, no, I don't know if Rogan was maybe anything. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, probably was doing something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then yeah, then Rogan. Now, I felt that last time I did Rogan when I did when I just did. Rogan. Now you can tell sometimes, like, like if I go to Segura's podcast, there's a lot of people that I get introduced to. Uh, their audience is much bigger. They're, they got a, he's got a huge, huge audience. Uh, but it's like you can tell, like where you know, it's like all that stuff just adds up. Where you can, you can just, it's like you're just getting seen here and here. And there's, and it's like there's, there is, there's these pops where 
it's like, all right, this is a swing. You things, you know, I always say like things are getting crazy. Like it, mm-hmm. you can feel things just get a little crazier. Like a little more stuff happens that you're like, all right, I never really seen that or felt that. You know, these this tour, this rain check tour, we're adding shows, uh, which is due to everybody f- listening to this. And uh, but it's like, yeah, it gets kind of crazy where you're like, wow, we're adding all these shows and yeah. doing all these things, and you're, you know, the Ryman and the Grand Ole Opry and you know, back to back nights and it all just like slowly, you know, but you, I don't think you sit there and you ever feel like you're like, Oh, I'm done. Like you don't feel like that. Like that's, that's the hard part. Sometimes you talk about like wanting to make it or you're, you still got this drive and everybody's like, Oh, well they're like, I would kill to have like your career. And you're like, but you don't, but I don't just give up. Yeah. I'm I right. don't then go like, all right, I got it. I'm yeah. going to relax. Let me just coast. I still don't think I've made it. Right. Like, you know, I know I have made it, but right. I haven't made it. Right. Like, I've, I'm not there. Like, I'm not Seinfeld. I'm not. So I haven't made it. But, you know, it's like when someone else is like, thanks that you're, you know, it's tough. That's always a hard part for people you're, when you do do it. Because you, then you lose people to talk to because then, well, I wish I mm-hmm. would have yeah. made it. And you're like, I haven't made it though. Right. You know, I mean, I've made it in, yeah, we're all here, but it's like, I'm still, I still got this next special has got to still, still be great. still have goals I'm working yeah, towards. Yeah, still got to be, I still want to go, I want to sell out Bridgestone. I want to go sell out Madison Square Garden. I want to see if I can get to that point and yeah. do all that stuff. Well, that's not, then I haven't made it where I want to make it, but in theory. So you had a few steps along the way that discovered on different levels and, but I think that's almost everybody yeah, to some degree. I mean, even you, uh. To some, like you did that show at the Zanies, Brad Paisley show, I think. Yeah. And that led you to get to do the Grand Ole Opry the regularly, Opry. right? Yeah. Yeah. The guy who worked at the Opry saw me and was like, you should do the Opry sometime. And I was like, all right. Yeah. And then that guy became president of the Opry two years oh, later. Wow. Two years later, I got an email from him out of the blue. Oh, two years like, later. Let's do the Opry. I didn't realize yeah. that. So that's pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah. You it know? is crazy. Right place, right time. I've had a few of those where it's just the right person was That's in the room. That's the opportunity. Yeah. Right. Luck is opportunity. Yeah. It's like you got to be I, – I, dude, I remember when Fallon came in, it was – it's like, you know, we talked about Giannis. Giannis is here, and, like, it was uh, – Giannis was there. And it's like I, – I mean, I was very ready for him to see me do 10 minutes. I was going to murder for those 10 minutes because it was like, I knew it was like there, which I think I've talked about when he came back and saw me the second time Mm -hmm. at Gotham, uh, you know, where it's, you know, like you just knew, I knew I could like, you know, I knew I was going to murder and you are just going to come out and it's going to be, and you know, that's not where you're trying to feel like you're overconfident or anything. You're bragging. I don't, you don't really come from that space, but you come from a very confident space into going, I'm ready for this. I knew the set. You, you, mm-hmm. You're like, I know the set I'm going to do. I have enough. I In 10 minutes, you know, you're like, I can kill easily for 10 minutes. Uh, I can kill pretty hard for 10 minutes. And mm-hmm. so it was like you knew, you know, you knew you could. With the, and the opportunity came. And that's what you're all you're being ready for. If anybody's doing comedy or anything else, just that's the thing. Don't be, don't go looking for the opportunity. The opportunity will come and it will happen on its own. Be great and be undeniable and like work on that. It's almost like you don't ever know when you're going to get hit. Like you don't know what's going to happen. So just do that and be ready for whatever situation comes. And then when that situation comes and if it's the right time, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Because uh, there's times where you think that was the right time and then it wasn't. Mm-hmm. And then you then that when that time comes, you're ready. But don't go – can't people – I think people can sometimes search for uh, – opportunity too much like they think and i did too i'm not saying so i'm not saying don't do that i understand you're going to do that like it's i I don't like to always i don't like to everybody's got to find their own path uh you know so i don't mean like if you're sitting there going like don't be an idiot and you know someone's like we think fallon's coming down and you're like i don't know if i'm going to go like don't be yeah but i'm just saying be worry about whatever your act is or whatever your thing is make sure that's great and then when someone comes in to somewhere and then if they vouch for you and you do good for them, that's how you get vouched to other people. Cause then other people are like, no, I can. I mean, that's why on Fallon, I was, they went through all these bookers until they got, uh, Michael Cox, uh, now who's been there now for a while. And he's amazing. But all the bookers, I was like everybody's first comic on Fallon, 
because it was like they knew they knew he found and liked me and I was good at late night because I was clean and mm -hmm. I was kind of doing that thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was like, you know, it's like you do that where it's like people can then rely on you and they're like, all right, I know this dude's going to do good. It's not going to be a problem. He's going to kill. It's going to be great. I want people to see him. And then you're, you know, yeah. And then you went on that clean cut comedy tour with him in front of a yeah. lot of people. That's front of a lot of, yeah, in front of a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, getting in front of all those people, like, you know, opening for Chris Rock, getting in front of all those people. That stuff all matters. Like getting in front of all those audiences. That stuff has come around. That comes around more than you think. It's just getting in front of those audiences. Mm -hmm. Is Because uh, <clears throat> you don't really think, but you think about it more about opening for the person. Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm getting to open for Chris Rock. Yeah. So I'm just really thinking about that. And then you look back and you have people come to shows and they're like, we saw you with Chris Rock. And like, yeah. it's a lot. Of, and you're like, oh, it's like the amount of people, because, you know, it's just, word of mouth is basically how, is, is even probably the biggest I've had. But it's it's people just passing along and like, and that that spreads so much. And that that can never be taken away from me. A voucher from a friend, like if a, like if a person sits there and it goes, my good buddy says, and I trust him, he says this guy's great. That goes so far. Yeah. You need the help of everybody else, but like that's, the the people the people watching and listening people listen to them more than they listen to uh you know some guy they don't know yeah right? but if they if they tell me and then they want to be the one that tells you you know how, how fun is it to tell someone about someone yeah that's the funnest part yeah that's why we this is the whole reason even like watching stuff is one reason is to go like you gotta see this thing because yeah. then you're like you you feel like a little like dude you told me about yeah, this like that's yeah. crazy yeah, yeah. that stuff is we have it with movies we have it with artists we have it with everything you want to be that person mm -hmm. yeah you want to be the one that puts it on to someone else you be a tastemaker dude yeah that's you want right. to be a tastemaker taste yeah. you want to be yeah 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 when were you discovered <laughs> well today it's here today yep yeah this podcast yeah yeah mm -hmm. this definitely this podcast for sure yeah for for both of us a lot of the people that have come and seen us that's that's where they know us from now yep so that's a really cool thing for sure you know discovered and i did not say i said don't specifically <laughs> don't go watch these two guys yeah. <laughs> said the opposite yeah. of uh no see it all comes together yeah all right all right this ended up being this is this episode was a weird one. Yeah. Maybe, was it not? I felt like post-game analysis started out great, real dip, mm. came back with some fire, yeah. and then we ended with a kind of a serious note. Sweet. I think something for everybody. Yeah. A little sweetness at the end. Yeah. Some pretty solid laughs in there for I sure. I think so. I think so. Yep. Uh, you know, <clears throat> then we discovered... Each other. What did we discover? <laughs> Discovered yeah. ourselves. Uh, the, Discovered gra the Grand Canyon was. Uh, oh, what is it? You have a Grand Canyon? <laughs> no, it was fifteen forty. Yeah, one more. Uh, Post-its. Spanish explorers, fifteen forty. That's who discovered the Grand Canyon. Yep. Right time, right place. Yep. You know, imagine just being an explorer back then. You just get to walk up on this yeah. stuff. <laughs> oh yeah. Maybe I could do. That. I might do that as a joke. Like the, how easy it was to be an explorer back easy then. To be a, yeah, I don't. Uh, easy to be an explorer back then. Just like <laughs> if you can make it over that hill, you're going to change the way the world looks. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wander over there. All right, I don't want to get that. That could be a pretty That's good joke. Pretty good. I like That's that. pretty good. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, I can't believe we got up to the time that we got to. To yeah, be honest, either. I kept looking at that clock sometimes, and I was like, I think it's going backwards. <laughs> There was a couple times during this I thought <laughs> I don't know if he started it. Yeah. Yeah. But we, we got there, it. man. We got there. Good job, everybody. Uh see you next week. We love you. Let's go. Uh, let's go, folks. <laughs>